Hello everybody, welcome and thanks for tuning in to Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary's live feed with our hoofstock field. Today we're going to be hanging out with some ponies, donkeys, zebra, camels, and bison and a llama. If anybody has any questions, please go ahead and write them in and we'd be happy to answer them. In the meantime, we do have some fun facts for you guys. First up, we have our beautiful zebra over here named Zyda. She's a grant zebra. They are native to Africa and they are the smallest of all of the zebra subspecies. They are closely related to horses and donkeys. They are the same genus. And so as you can see, zebras are herb anim herd animals just like our ponies and other animals and they're hanging out together friends who spend their days together. We have two dromedary camels. There are two types of camel. We have dromedary. There's also a background camel. Um, that's, we have the one humped. The background is the two humped. Um, they live about 40 years. They're, that is their average lifespan. Um, there is about 15 million still globally in the wild. Uh, their hump is for storing fat, not water. A lot of people get that confused. You can see them way back over there. They're munching on some stuff over there on the ground and they're hanging out with their pony, Belle. They're all buddies. Right in here in front of us, we have our llama and our ponies. They came over to check out what we're doing. So all of the ponies that we have here, they range in different ages from 8 to about 16. We have our llama, Tony Llama, right here. A lot of people think ponies are just baby horses. That's not, that is fiction. Ponies are their own species of horse. They're just a smaller breed. So then the ones you see here are all full grown. They will not get any bigger. Some facts about bison are they are the largest mammal in North America. We call the males bulls. Oop, we're having a little Oop, crazy frolicking action here. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty big, but they are very fast. They can run up to 35 miles an hour, and they are also good swimmers and they can jump. Their average lifespan is about 10 to 20 years. Um, a little bit longer in captivity. They don't have wonderful eyesight. Um, their best sense is their sense of smell. They're very similar to cows. They smell a lot like cows. And so you can see this, this camel here is Nomad and he has a special um, hull, um, fly mask on that has this thing that protects his eye. Um, and that's just because he recently had a surgery on it and we want to keep it as safe and clean as possible. So we had a custom made um, fly mask with this attachment to protect the eye for him. And as you can see, he's just happy as can be over there hanging out with the, the bison and his brother Oki, the other camel. We have little Miss Zyda coming over here to say hello to us. She's absolutely beautiful. And um, whoo, we're frolicking, we're frolicking. <laughs> it's a nice brisk morning out here. It's very cloudy and usually when it gets a little chillier out, they all kind of are a little bit more rambunctious. Yes, one of our camel's names is Nomad. So we have Nomad and Oki out here. And in according to the International Union of Conservation of Nature, the Grant Zebra and the American Bison are both near threatened. So that means that there's still a good amount of them, but not, you know, they still need some help. And then our camels are under the least concern category because like we said earlier, there is about 15 million of the camels in the world. Someone's coming over really close to say hi. Say hi, Oki. Just checking out what we're doing.
All right, we had somebody asking um, what is on the camel's head. And like I mentioned earlier, he has a special um, protective covering for his eye because he recently had an eye surgery and we want to keep it as clean and protected as possible. And so that was a custom made um, headpiece just to help keep it safe. Um, camels are nice to an extent. Um, ours are very lovely. Um, but they can be very dangerous. So it's just a matter of, you know, knowing your animals and um, understanding that they have a massive size. Um, if you can see his feet and his legs, they are very huge and they can kick with their feet in every direction. So. Where's Clayton? Clayton is out on property. He is checking out what all the other animals are up to today. We have a lot of exciting new improvements um, happening here at the habitat. So although we miss all of you guys out here, we are keeping busy and have a lot of great things to show you all when we reopen. All right, we have a great question. Were these exotic animals born wild in the wild or in captivity? So all of the animals that you see here were born in captivity. Um, we don't have any animals that are out here in the hoofstock field that were born in the wild. If anybody has any questions about any of the animals, please feel free to ask us. Yes, Jim is still here. Um, Jim is, he does a lot of our um, projects here. He's a really good carpenter. Um, so yeah, we see him all the time. He's Clayton's father. Carol Baskin, actually, we don't have any affiliation with her. She is at a completely different park that she has no ownership of Big Cat Habitat. They own a sanctuary in Tampa, which is Big Cat Rescue. And we have another question about can they ever return to the wild? So no, animals born in human care um, cannot generally be released into the wild because they just wouldn't know how to act and to survive. Um, so they're kind of, that's kind of like putting your chihuahua out in a pack of wolves and saying, go and live free. Um, so it doesn't really work like that, unfortunately. Um, these guys are used to, you know, being very spoiled, having food on a regular schedule and in the wild, it's just not like that. Um, also, there isn't really much of a wild anymore. Um, there's a lot of, you know, conservation projects out there that are trying to, you know, to support more land for these animals to live out in the wild. So that's a great cause definitely to look into um, to help these animals. Is that a little zebra? Yes, Michelle, this is a little zebra. Her name is Zyda and she is a Grant zebra, which is a the smallest subspecies of plain zebras. How is the liger doing? We have two ligers, um, Mia and Brutus, and they are both doing great. Hanging out, everybody, all the animals are enjoying the wonderful weather today. It's nice and fresh out. So where are the animals uh, rescued from? So we get our animals from all sorts of different situations. Um, a lot of them we get from other places that close down, um, zoos or sanctuaries or that just have an overflow and can't care for all the animals that they need. So we take them in. Um, we also get them from, you know, sometimes private owners who had them in other states and um, they really loved and cared for their animals. But when they moved here, um, the regulations are a lot stricter and different and they weren't able to have them. 
Um, so we get them from there too. Um, every animal has a different story and they all come from different situations and we're just happy to help every animal that we can. That is Skittles. He He's out there too. There is one that's same as Skittles that's out here, one of the Shetland ponies. All right, well, we're going to get ready to wrap up this live talk today. So if anybody has any final questions before we go, just please let us know. Um, also, just a heads up for anybody who's looking to help support um, local nonprofits, there is a giving challenge through the Community Foundation of Sarasota on April 28th to the 29th from noon to noon. And um, it's a fundraising, a 24 hour fundraising um, for all different nonprofits throughout Sarasota, Manatee, um, and the local counties. Um, and it's a great way to help support your local nonprofits. Um, the Patterson Foundation is actually matching every donation made during that time, um, a one-to-one -one match up to $100. So uh, if you donated $5, uh, the organization would get 10. If you donated 50, the organization would get 100. So it's a really great cause. Um, so that's one way that you can definitely help the animals out during this difficult time. Um, we have not done a live with the tigers yet, but it is in the works, so just stay tuned to our social media and we'll definitely announce it when we go and do a live with the tigers. And then I saw that somebody asked if the ligers were bred here. No, they were not bred here. We, um, we got both of them in different situations, but they uh, both came from a different, uh, I think Brutus or Mia came from a zoo and I don't know where Brutus came from. Just from other organizations that couldn't couldn't care for them or keep them and so they found a home with us. All right, well thank you everybody for tuning in and um, just so everyone knows we will be doing an interview with a sloth this Sunday um, at 5.30 p.m. So if anybody's interested in learning a little bit about Stella, our two-toed sloth, definitely tune in this Sunday at 5.30 for an interview with a sloth. Everybody have a great day.